So we've got that. We've only got, oh, look, there's a pencil. Um, some resolutions. Some resolve to give up on the smoking. Some resolve to cut out all the meat. Some resolve to get their trunks more regularly soaking and some resolve to stop all the deceit. Some resolve to solve financial problems by taking up a life involving crime and some resolve to give their ageing parents more than just the fag end of their time. Some resolve to have a hobby, some resolve to join a lobby, some resolve to clear up every jobby that their doggy does and not go hosepipe crazy in the drought. And some of the aforesaid resolutions dissolve before the Christmas tree's been put outside the door, especially resolutions one and four, which, to remind you, are the smoking and the deception. Taking out the in it and putting in it in it. This clock has still got a lot of mileage in it. This clock is well stocked with mileage in it. This society has still got This society has still got deep class divisions in it. Class-wise, this society is still deeply divided in it. This potato has the possibility of the most delightful bloom in it. This potato is bloom full of possible delight in it. This gap between the floorboards has got some little bits of old cheese in it. Have you thought about doing some hoovering in it? Peace, love and potatoes. Wed in 1944, my mother kept on peeling from the pick of the potato sack with the occasional knack of getting their jackets off all in one piece. Quite a trick, a quiet feat, like her and dad's feeling for each other uninterruptedly alive and complete. Glass is good, contact lens is bad. In the embrace of my glasses I openly accept my vulnerability and affirm my acceptance of outside help. As well as providing open acknowledgement of the imperfection in my eyesight, my glasses are a symbolic celebration of the wider imperfection that is the human condition. In contrast, contact lenses are a hiding of the fault. They pretend the self-sufficiency of the individual and minister unto the cult of stultifying normality. They are that which should be cast out of your vision. They are a denial of the self. They are a denial of the other. They are a betrayal of humanity. This is called, I wouldn't say my brother-in-law was fat because he is quite thin. He's as miserable as sin, but not as interesting. He's as open as the pub is at 20 past four in the morning and as welcome as an open sore on your eye, but he thinks he is great. He isn't beautiful, he's horrible. He eats crisps in the cinema as a matter of principle. In a previous incarnation, he was a beer crate. If he does you a favor, then you know that you're in debt. If you want someone to help you out, he's a very outside bet. If you were in a lifeboat and someone had to go and my brother-in-law was there, he wouldn't exactly need a ballot. He's ten stone in his pyjamas and that's ten stone overweight. He's not exactly an artist, but they should hang him in the tate. He was an adult from the age of eight and whatever age he dies at will be far too late. I don't like him. But it must be said that the brother-in-law is in part myself because this next piece is something that I did. This is called his heart's in the wrong place, it should be in the dustbin. The other night I went to see my brother-in-law for a chat. After five minutes, he went and sat in the garage. After ten minutes, he came back in saying, Here, John, you stay in the night. If that's all right, I said. Then he was gone, up to the spare bedroom, to change the sheets, to put the dirty ones back on. OK, a dog and a pigeon. In a shocking flurry of feathers, a seemingly pleasant dog attacked a pigeon in the park. The badly shaken owner tethered the attacker who began to bark. If that dog can kill, I said, you should let it finish the job. No, 
said another witness. It's not our job to interfere with nature. The owner looked. The pigeon bled. It's your dog. Your decision, I said. I'll let him go, says the owner, and then it's up to Fred. So Fred is freed, and the bleeding bird is shaken and left, but still not dead. It's even worse now, the owner whimpers. A brick on the head, then, I say. I can't, says the owner, beginning to weep. Can you? Can you do it? Then my brother-in-law comes over with half a paving stone. I'll do it, he says, for ten quid. Max likes to be with people, but people don't like to be with Max. Max is a dog with a problem, the sort of problem it's a job to ignore. The first time they all thought it were funny, but not anymore. Picture the scene, this home-loving hound is sleeping by the fire with the family round. He wakes up and makes a little sound. Little Albert gets it first. He's nearest to the ground. Albert's mum gets wind of it, and she says, open the door. And whatever we've been feeding him, I don't think we should give him no more. Max does another one like old Kippers, wakes up dead. Dead, 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 daddy. He wakes up daddy. In his fireside slippers, daddy wakes up and says, open the door. Albert says, it's open, dad. I did it when he did it before. And mum says, his heart's relaxed with Max about. Yesterday it happened while we were out in the car, and it's a small car. And granny, she was sick. She's not used to it like we are. Maybe we should swap him for a budgery car. Max is smeller. He can interfere with your teller. Look at her. Look at her. He's not an elephant. I need you like a bully needs to boast I need you like an ocean needs coast I need you like a doggy needs a lamppost To be a damp post I need you like a copper needs a crook I need you like a cranny needs a nook I need you like a look-alike Need somebody to look like I need you like a kiwi needs a fruit I need you like a wee-wee needs a root Out of the body I need you like Noddy needed little ears Just for the contrast with his friend whose ears were bigger Like a calendar needs a week Like a colander needs a leak Like humans seem to need to seek out what life on Mars is I need you like hospitals need vases I need you like a psycho needs a pathway I need you like King Arthur needed a table That was more than just a table for one person Cause he had all of them nights, you see I need you like a novel needs a plot I need you like a greedy need a lot I need you and we've done this verse already I can't remember I need you like memory needs To know what's gone on before I need you like a table needs a floor I need you like Keith Moore who made it with the wood and put the eye holes in you see and then put the eyes into the wooden thing there and look at those ears cheers cheers you up that doggy don't hang on till it's time to go 
For your lecture emotional sideshow Don't hang on until tomorrow Don't hang on for another moment Don't hang on till the gate is closing Don't hang on till the daisies grow While waiting until it is almost far too late Why wait for another moment Say it all now, it's not a moment too soon now Why we'll wait until next July or June now Why we'll wait for the next eclipse of the moment Do you feel at home with a heart that's hardly ever open? Why keep it bottled up when there's a genie hoping to get out? Shout it out the thing you really should have spoken about by now Why keep it bottled up until that heart is broken? One wish, no feeling will dilly-dally One wish, no lagging with love to show One wish, don't be an emotional scallywag you silly so-and-so It's a lovely instrument, isn't it? It goes well with you. Thank you. It's an easy, lovely instrument. It's got a lovely sound. It's not...